Hello, thanks for visiting the Phoenix Roost. I'm Adam. And I'm Matt. For our first live stream, we're going to be taking a look back over 2018, which overall was probably better than 2017. I remember 2017 was kind of underwhelming. It was a little lackluster except for Nintendo. Nintendo kicked ass 2017. Yeah. Right. Well, and I'm just talking shit about the year, because, like... So, we're just going to be live streaming some games. I'm just... Yeah, I'm just walk in the wilderness dead like a wild fool yeah so don't worry about that this is mostly audio podcast but we just have a visual um we're gonna be breaking this up into a couple different videos first off we're just gonna start off talking about multi-console releases uh i think i'll let matt start off with street fighter 5 arcade edition uh which so, I, yes is that like a new does that count as like a new release compared to street fighter 5 so i mean it technically counts as a fucking like re-release really like super ultra you know, or something it, yeah because all it does is so this is the shitty thing about street fighter 5 arcade edition the thing that really pisses me off about this is that so people got mad because street fighter 4 right because they kept releasing edition after edition but they liked which, the game right 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 okay. which which i get like i understand why they're upset i yeah. get it and i slash don't get it only because like this is how street fighters always been done so like the yeah since two planes like oh my god now yeah since two there's been like fucking six editions which was and a really lot of the first one didn't it? even add like characters yeah 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 no street fighter 2 for sure was the first yeah because the first one's like a street fighter up. one's a sack of shit like yeah no dude it's a shitty fighter but it's oh. like like garbage it's just like, shitty. real garbage okay yeah like no and then like they're like night and day from each other the other like yeah hmm. street fighter 2 is where everybody considers the start of the actual series yeah that's like, what I, I knew that like for some reason i thought like street fighter 1 was like a sister series to final fight or something no it's, it's I, they cross it's over though bad. don't they oh yeah for sure no uh, okay. a lot of the characters um that's from final fight eventually made their way dude only hagar has not and i think hagar really should Really? I thought Hangar did for sure. He was a cool character. No, he made it into Marvel vs. Capcom yeah. games, but oh, not that's good, uh, that actual fucking... Yeah. Uh, but yeah, for <laughs> but me, yeah. I don't care about Street Fighter V at all. I don't like Street Fighter as a series very much. Just not for me. I'm not good at it. Uh, but yeah, just, See, I, I've I really heard liked, it's dumb. I really loved Street Fighter Two as a kid. I got super into it, and I kind of dropped off Street Fighter, like, besides the Versus series and stuff like that. Um, yeah for a bit there but uh street fighter 4 got me back into it and i actually got like hardcore back into it for a bit because uh it was just super fun it was fluid it was fun i liked the 2d with the 3d sprites like it looks nice um and then i didn't i honestly did the addition thing bother me yeah but it wasn't like super bad and i always added new fighters so it wasn't like like it was just like mechanics or anything being fixed Weren't some of, like, the original um, the Street Fighter 2s, like, just changing, like, speeds and stuff, though? Like, hyper or whatever? Dude, yeah, some of them just, yeah, they just change mechanics, like, different mechanics of them. So that's or bullshit, they have in your opinion, though. Yeah. Dude, that's super bullshit. And okay. I understand why they did it back then, though. I do understand it, because yeah, how, do you, how do you update a game, a cartridge? Like, yeah, you just, you don't. So if you did want to make a better version, you would have to just fucking, yep, we are released a different game. Like... But, uh, but yeah, the shitty thing about Street Fighter V, though, is this. Well, there's a lot of shitty things about Street Fighter V, but <laughs> specifically the Arcade Edition, is this. The Arcade Edition should not exist due to the way Capcom's monetized Street Fighter V be any means of this fucking game. Yeah. And that that's how the characters would be. Fight money we give you. And then the fight money thing... They just have made it harder and harder to get fight money. Like, certain things that used to give out fight money, they stopped. Mm -hmm. And, like, they give out less fight money now, and, like... And fight money is just the in-game I currency. mean, just, I guess it, it did happen this fucking year, so I guess let's talk about that. Then they just added just straight-up advertising into the fucking thing, and just like, yep, you earn more fight money if you keep the ads. Right. It's just like we God, should probably damn, uh, guys. like honestly next weekend do like biggest mishaps and stuff because this year that's for gonna sure, be like sure. a running theme of last year was just constant yeah, like, fuck ups based Jesus on greed Christ. and just stupidity in general. No, it was a bad year for that shit for yeah. sure. Yeah, like like game quality wise, there was a lot of good releases, but there was also a lot of just like what are you guys even doing? Yeah, some real dumb shit happening. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah 
overall, I've played Street Fighter V a little bit, the, the base one, I guess. I mean, it's the same fucking version. I just don't have some of the DLC characters. Which I actually think I have all the ones for arcades, so... Never mind. Since I just don't have Season 3. Um, it, it's pretty fun. I mean, it still plays sort of like Street Fighter 4. I think it's a little worse, honestly. The fucking, like... There's just, like, a lot less heart to it, it feels like to me. It literally feels like a cash-in game, it's, and it makes me sad. Cause, well, like, I mean, I it want is Arcade it. Edition, which added in the arcade yeah. mode, so... Yeah. I think I think that's we're good on Street Fighter. It's, uh... Yeah. It's just a misstep, but, like, the gameplay itself is fun, or...? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's Street... It's more of Street Fighter, which is that's... fine for me. I like Street Fighter. It's my second favorite, like, fighting game franchise behind Mortal Kombat, you know? Yeah. So. That might be, like, the worst part, that it's, like, a good game stuck behind, like, just bullshit decisions. It's just really poor bullshit, yeah. Speaking of poor bullshit, uh, Metal Gear Survive. Uh, neither one of us played this, and we're going to go into a list of games that we didn't play this year, but the catch is those are <laughs> games we wanted to play, and I don't want to play Metal Gear Survive. Right, neither do I, actually. I only even kind of wanted to talk about Metal yeah, Gear Survive. Yeah, I pretty much just want to talk shit about it. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. I felt like it needed a little shit talking. Yeah. And, you know, it was it this it was a game they threw they shit out this year, so so Konami as a company is just fucking dropped in all regard, like yeah, at this they, point. They're like uh, kinda coming back a little bit though, like Super Mar uh, not Super uh, Super Bomberman R and stuff. I mean, yeah, I guess Super Bomberman is out and that game is funnish. I beat that game this year, so Nice. That's cool. But uh, yeah, they great, definitely like, Konami's definitely yeah. was going down the shitter, and they were doing some evil shit. But yeah, I don't know. Anyway, Metal Gear Survive, but, man. What did you want to say about it, dude? That game, dude, with the actual Metal Gear, it's like got weird zombie elements to it, fucking Minecraft arc elements to it. Like it's just such a bunch of fucking bullshit. Yeah, it's a tower defense it's, game it's, too. Dude, it's like. It literally is blatantly Konami just trying to put a Metal Gear game out this year. Didn't matter what yeah. it is or if it's just like a little bit for Hideo Kojima because I've heard for a while that like after Snake Eater he was just done with the series and they mm. kept wanting to make new ones and he kept being like, well, I guess I'll make four. I guess I'll make fucking five. I guess I'll make six. Yeah, you know, part of the like, reason was because he didn't want him fucking with his series. Yeah, to do this shit with it. Like... And then and they yeah, just, just sat, unceremoniously just like, oh. do it immediately. So it's just fucked. Right. So yeah, we're off to a pretty bad start so far. But uh, uh, how was Call of Duty Black Ops 4, man? Dude, okay, so Call of Duty Black Ops 4 is weird for me. Because I actually really like the Black Ops series as a whole. Like, it's my favorite of the Call of Duty series. And mm -hmm. the, the just... This game really does have to be kind of broken down into three segments. Because... It is like almost three separate like games. It's weird. The modes like are full blown, so that's kind of cool. Um, because a mode that I honestly don't give much time to, which is zombies, is like way, way, way fucking cooler now. Like there's like just like a lot of like branching story arcs and shit in like each map, and like they all like connect somehow. Like you get like time travel to fucking Rome and have to fight off like Roman zombies in the fucking like gladiator yeah. coliseum you get time travel to the titanic and shit it's cool as shit and uh the multiplayer itself is good it's call of duty which I like um the only thing I will say about the multiplayer itself that I did not like is that half the maps are from black ops 1 I think it's more like 7 maps or something but it feels like fucking half of the maps were just ripped out of the other game which you know, it, it's cool to have one or two maps that you remember, and you're like, yeah, man, fuck, I really like that map. When it's, like, half of them, though, it's just like, wow, you just took the other game, and you didn't really make much more, like, mm -hmm. cool. You know, I played, like, over 200 hours on fucking Black Ops 1. I, I know these maps, so that's neat for me, but uh, it'd be cool to get some new shit with the game I bought. <laughs> yeah, And absolutely. then there's Blackout mode, which just, like... I don't know, I just don't think that those fucking style of goddamn games are for me. Like, I tried it a couple times. The coolest thing it does is instead of having, like, this, like, you just die when you're outside of the, like, whatever. Have you ever played one of those stupid fucking games? Like, Yeah. Well, I haven't played you know, them, but so I know you... how Battle Royale works. They've been doing them since fucking okay, Minecraft. Okay, so yeah, how so, they, yeah. like, 
they like tighten down on the like the yeah. area by like just making you die if you're outside yeah, the, the battle the zombies game. will just attack you if yeah. they're if you're outside of it which is neat i was like oh yeah that's cool it's probably the most fun i had with a battle royale game but at the same time i just don't care and that's so, how i like, feel about I call of duty in general that yeah and so i just like it's not a bad series that, it's just like, not for me at all right but uh so how's four overall i didn't like good i'd say it's average i'd say it's worse than call of duty's the the black ops series has ever been it's probably the worst one in it but overall like it's, it is fun to play i have a blast with it when i'm playing just multiplayer or zombies um i it does hurt a bit that there's no campaign and i know it's dumb because the campaign is normally just generic garbage but the black ops series in general has been the most interesting that the campaigns have ever gotten mm -hmm. like they just have like a lot of like cerebral surreal shit happening like that kind of crap and so for that to be the you know the series that stops with the campaigns i'm just like really come on yeah like, another misstep all right but yeah uh, overall it's fine yeah. right on i'll uh not check it out yeah dude <laughs> Uh, next up, did you play Iconoclast? I know I have not. I actually cool. haven't even. I barely. I heard of it and have never really looked into it. So Iconoclast is a cool little <laughs> indie platformer with like action puzzle bits. It's kind of like Mega Man. Uh, you play mm -hmm. as. Uh, I haven't played it in a while actually, so I don't remember if you're like a robot or anything. But uh, you just play as this girl. She's got like powers. Eventually, you unlock more characters who have different powers, so they can interact with the levels in different ways. It's got a beautiful like 16-bit aesthetic, and just plays really, really well. Like the controls are sharp and solid. Platformer. It's really nice to have that. And uh, yeah, it just looks gorgeous. If you haven't seen screenshots of it, I just just like look up the trailer for it. You'll immediately be won over uh, by it, like I was. Especially if you like old school. Like if you like like Owl Boy or whatever, like Cave Story. Oh yeah, or, yeah. Or like the look of Fez, not the guy who made it, who's a piece of shit. Sorry, Phil Fish. And by sorry, I mean <laughs> fuck you. Uh, but yeah, that's Iconoclast. It's pretty. It, it's good shit. I'm a. I liked it. I didn't. I didn't beat it. I. I got distracted. There's just life, man. You know how it is. For sure. No, I get that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did you play the next game on here either? Next game. Subnautica. What the fuck, phone? Just goddamn. Did you play Subnautica? Not a single thing can just fucking work for me. Subnautica? No, I have not. You, okay, so Subnautica is a really cool game. It's like the only arc style game I've ever really been interested in. Uh, basically, you're on a spaceship and it crash lands on this water planet, and you're the only survivor, and you just end up having to create like an underwater base, and you have to like go explore the depths, and like there's crazier and crazier fish aliens down there. I just barely started playing on PS4. It released at the start of this year officially out of like uh, early access on PC uh, and then it came to consoles just recently at the end of the year. I played it on PS4 like I was saying, but uh yeah, it's really really cool. Uh it's the only like arc style game that I've been interested to keep playing after just a little bit. Uh, just to keep up these weird little side releases, uh, I didn't end up actually playing this one, so I'll just I'll actually just ignore that one. You got a uh, Dragon Ball Fighters, right? Yeah, for sure. No, for sure I did. I didn't play this one, but just uh, trailer-wise, it looks gorgeous, and uh, it from what I have heard, it plays super well. Dude, okay, so that game plays super fucking well. No, it it. It plays exactly the way you want a DBZ fighter to. Like it, it mm -hmm. made me real happy. Um, it's made by Arc Systems, the guy that made Guilty Gear and yep. Blaze Blue, which is a good fucking company to make a fucking two D game like that. Absolutely. Um, I'm not great at fighters or play them too much, but I love me some Blaze Blue. No, it's it's smooth as shit. There's a bunch of characters in it, which is like, like a, like different. Like they all feel different, which is yeah. awesome. Like, it's not like some um, of the older kind of ones game. where there's like five different Goku's. Right. It, no, it's not like that. I yeah. mean, there is DLC that I think adds in like an extra Goku or some shit. Yeah, like, and that's fine. Oh yeah, because it adds fucking the evil Goku, pink hair yeah. Goku. Yeah. 
It's uh something black, I think, or just black. Yeah, it's know. Goku black. I think it just is that. Yeah. But so yeah, a... so I probably can add that guy in later. But whatever, like, and even he plays like extremely differently from what I've seen. And the mm -hmm. game is just so fucking beautiful. The only thing I would say for it is that there's just not like a there's not like a lot of content in it overall. Like other than just, just looking for like street fights, fighting. Yeah, like yeah. you're fighting. That's what you're doing. Well, I mean, that's, like we played uh, play the demo fair. a bit, and that's pretty that's pretty accurate to how that game is still. Like honestly, the online's gotcha. better. Like connected, you can connect easier. Like it's not as fun as it was in the demo. But... Is that hub world still just as useless? Uh, no, I think it's a little bit better too. It's not. Oh, it's still cool. pretty useless, but like, yeah, still a little bit better. You know? Oh God, got stuck in a tree. <coughs> All right, so yeah, that was a good one. Uh, next up, we were both super hyped for this and uh, dropped off the radar for me pretty quickly. I think you are genuinely more interested in it, but I mean, well, you'll get into your problems. Monster Hunter World came out and. Uh, I've always wanted to like Monster Hunter, but anytime I've gotten them, and I've played like three on Wii U, I've played Generations or four on DS, 3DS. The 3DS? Yeah, and I also played Freedom yeah, Unite those way wrong, back. So yeah. yeah, I played uh, Freedom Unite way back on the PSP. So I fucking tried to love this series and I just wasn't able to, and I kind of hate myself, but casualize it enough for me to actually want to play it more. But uh, no still just grindy and gets annoying and like the game design itself is really cool but just i don't have the time to dedicate to one game doing the same shit over and over and over and over again even though it was really fun in co-op and it does play really well there's nothing against the game itself it's just my personal taste it's an excellent game just mm. no and i can understand that whole like that that problem with it. I think I always have been pretty understanding of like it's like yeah I don't really like the series I'm like yep I can see why yeah but I want to really bad it's an amazing concept Hold up one sec what the fuck what's up man nah, I just go lock my door because I thought I heard a knock knock knocking on it nobody should be knocking on my door this time of night so. Oh, it's probably just the wind, but yeah, might as well. For sure. Fucking windstorm. But yeah, um, no, uh, World, it was weird, because when I first started playing it, I was like, holy shit, this is the best yeah. Monster Hunter. Me too. Like, I've ever played. Like, you know, they, they did, they casualized a little bit, yeah, but all the problems that they... And like, not in a bad way, took even. issues and they made didn't it Skyrim streamlined. It all. streamlined it. Yeah, no, no, no. They just made things easier, like, oh... Okay, well, instead of having to, like, paintball this fucking monster, and sometimes the paintballs wear off, you can just track them via this, like, flies, mm -hmm. like, so, eat way easier to track. Okay, cool. Oh, items are easier to organize and get, like, you know, that way. Oh, awesome. The, but the weird part about it was, like, the second I beat that game, I just could not get back into it. And, like, you beat the game real fast, and the fucking... The fight. That's that the fight real is game. so just sad. In general, hey, viewer, just like... we're just doing a general overlook of uh, last year. We're talking about Monster Hunter World right now while I swing around New York. Sorry. No, no, you don't. That fucking no. It's just like you know. I mean, you just shot him to death. Like you just shot him with a ballista. This old the dying boss. like dragon or whatever. Like yeah, it was pathetic. Just like just, yeah, it was super pathetic. You're like, what the fuck? Come on. This is the the major fight, and then yeah. after that, I just like I played it once or twice here and there, and like, you know, there's some oh, cool really? shit. I like I got Ryu's costume. Hi. I thought you played it a bit more than that. That's nuts. Well, I played it for a little bit after I beat it, like for like a month after I kept trying to in and out mm -hmm. to get after it. But after that, like I just kind of moved on to other stuff, and like here and there, if my roulette will land on it, then I'll go dick around with it some more. Um, Your roulette, you no, say? Then, what are you talking about? The Decision Roulette powered this whole stream, guys. That's right. The Decision Roulette, unbeknownst to the people that made that. Are, yeah. Because we don't get paid for it. Sponsors. But it's available on yep. the Play Store. And if you can't make decisions for yourself, don't you worry, baby. Decision Roulette's got your back. Anyway. So that's Monster Hunter World. It was all right. Neither of us can really get back into it though, which sucks because it looks gorgeous. Yeah. And how do you feel about that DLC I think coming I ended out? Up like, I'm sorry. The big ass DLC coming out for it, the Iceborne thing. Uh, I, I I don't know what you're saying. I'm sorry. 
Oh. What are you saying to me? Okay, Monster Hunter World is going to have a big DLC coming out soon called Iceborne that introduces like a whole new area and like monsters and quests and stuff. So I guess you don't know about it. So I guess you're not excited. <laughs> okay. No. That's Question bullshit. answered. Monster Hunter Hunt World sucks. That's Sounds what we're cool. saying. Uh, let's see. I didn't play that one. Okay, next game. All I like is fucking weird little indie games, I guess. So uh, Into the Breach is another really cool game. Uh, it came out for... I think it came out on Windows early this year and then came out on Switch later, which is when I played it. But uh, do you know what Into the Breach is at all? No, I have no idea what that is. Did you play a FTL, Faster Than Light? Yes, I did, yeah. Okay, so it's made by those guys and it's a totally different style of game, but it's just as neat of an idea. Um, basically, you're in a time-traveling mech suit who's just like, Kaiju are destroying the world, and then it turns into a turn-based game, and when you fail, which you will, because it's hard and you're supposed to Binding of Isaac or uh, style game where you just keep going at it over and over as best you can, um, and every time you lose, you like time-travel back to the start of like the Kaiju destroying the world, but you go to a different timeline, and so like you unlock characters from different timelines to be pilots, and you can upgrade your pilots, and you can upgrade your mechs, and it's just... Uh, it is a turn-based strategy game, but it's honestly more like a puzzle game because it's like here's the specific setup and you have to like make the right exact moves, which I guess you could argue all strategy games are a puzzle game in that aspect, but it feels more like a puzzle game than like an out-and-out -out, like war strategy game. But it's a really fun time. Killing kaijus is good. You should always be able to kill kaijus. Right, yeah. Or be a kaiju. Uh, after that, yeah, another weird little indie game. Have you ever heard of Way of the Passive Fist? Oh, you, you did cut out there for me. Have you Wait, ever played... The Pacifist? Yes, I have, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Have, did you play it? I didn't. I've been wanting to pick it up, but okay. I so haven't yet. I bought it, and it it's glitched on my system or TV? I'm not really sure. But the game is bigger than my TV is, and even if I fuck with the settings of the game or my TV, I can't get it to fit on my screen completely. But what it's... Basically, just a weird beat em up where you use the way of the pacifist, which is obviously a passive fighting style where you basically just parry and counter people to death. And uh, the little bit I played was neat, but like I said, it's glitched. So I'm kind of waiting for a patch, or I don't know what the issue is. I tried looking it up, and no one else seemed to have this problem. So I don't know. I'll figure it out one day. <laughs> what the fuck? It looked neat and played all right, though. Um, next up, finally for me, a game that's not a little indie title. I assume you didn't play Nina Kuni 2. Uh, no, I didn't play Nina Kuni actually. Uh, I so... wanted to though, and the plot of that one seems fucking insanely awesome to me. So, yeah. Um, so the first Nina Kuni came out a bit ago, and it was kind of like a weird Pokemon RPG where you just went around collecting monsters and fighting alongside of them, but in more like action out and out action. Nina Kuni is a weird series, but I really like Nina Kuni 1, so I picked up Nina Kuni to, like, I think animators from Ghibli worked on the second one, or at least people who were really good at copying the style, but it's not, like, you can, you can tell they didn't work on it this time. <laughs> uh, but yeah, another one, it's just one of those big ass RPGs, I really, I hope I get to beat it someday. Oh, cool. So, uh, how about you lead us into Far Cry 5, man? Fucking Far Cry 5, what a weird ass game. Uh, yeah, so Far Cry 5, like, like it was game. fun. Have you I thought got, about that? I'll give it that. Like, it was fun to dick around in Montana, but, like, Jesus, the story, like, just, like, really just sucked, honestly. Like, it just, it was just you just got captured so much that it was just unbelievable yeah. at a point. Like, it was Twice just like, an dude, area, at least. Dude, how am I not dead? Like, how am I fucking these people's lives up? And really, we're just at the point where, like, I, I'm captured anytime they want to capture me, and they somehow can't stop me. Like, come on now. Like, no fucking way. And the fucking ending of that game was the, probably the best part of it, but honestly, it wasn't even that, like, great. Like the only part I like about know. the ending and spoiler alert is that like the nukes just actually go off and I don't understand the people who are like oh yeah. the cult was right like so what like that doesn't change the fact that they were crazy pieces of shit like <coughs> still doesn't make me think I was the villain all along yeah like, and you the weren't Far Cry series really wants you to do like yeah 
we're yeah, we're not the villains all along. You're you fucking cultists driving people out of their homes, saying, "Hey, um, we'll kill you if you don't become a cultist yeah. with us." And like, you're like, your methodology is going around you're a fucking murdering police officer. Yeah, but like, I uh, mean, the even the main character's methodology is just like mass murder. So like, he's not a hero either, but he's not the out and out like, the bad guy. Like, he's like the Punisher, basically. Yeah, I would never consider him the bad guy. Yeah, I'd consider him a dude trying to do the job he was sent to do the best he can. Plus, if like, I remember, he got, like, stranded and fucked over there. So, what else are you yeah. gonna do? Just take it? Right. Survive. That's all he's trying to do. Take and ridiculous that was the other LSD. Shitty thing was, yeah, the recruit guy that just does no voice, doesn't talk at all. Like, that's just like, ah, uh, guy. Like... Hey, at least Herc was in it. Yeah, uh, yeah, I forgot. I forgot about that for a minute. Fuck Herc, by the way. Yeah. Um, didn't ever pick up the DLC, but none of that looked interesting to me, really, anyway. Yeah. I was and since say... one of them's Herc heavy, like. Oh yeah, that's yeah. I forgot about that. That's not good. Like, yeah, there's one of those three I just legit uh, yeah, no. don't want to even touch. I, like, I don't want to touch. It's any the of most them. interesting setting to me. Like that was the most interesting setting. Yeah, fucking Far Cry... Vietnam, I don't really care about. Fucking zombies, don't really care about. Mars, I was like, oh shit, Mars would get me to buy the season pass. And they're like, yeah, but Herx just ain't it the entire time. Oh. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Far Cry 5, uh, it's fun. It's a well-designed game. It's fun fucking around in the uh, just, you know, out and about. Cause mayhem, but Far Cry just hit that point where it's just the same thing over and over again. <laughs> it's just another Ubisoft game, and that's the problem. And uh, like, they need way better settings because I still stand by Primal's yeah. the best Far Cry because it's like weird. There's no other like caveman fucking game out there. Like, there's other games where See, you I run haven't around. Even played Primal yet. Like, I got so yeah, I burnt on Far Cry. Like, no, dude, I know. There, I just, yeah, dude, I'm like. I'm a retarded person and just keep buying and a hundred percenting every Fallout, not Fallout, Far Cry since three. Every Fallout game, everyone. Yeah, every Fallout game. Good thing we don't have to talk about that this year. <laughs> uh... Uh, so yeah, Far Cry Five. What the fuck was the deal with the DLC? It's like you didn't care. What the fuck? At all. Like, um, just fucking at all. Yeah, you gave no shits about that. Come on now, like. Matt, how about you take us back? Dude, they have potential. Uh, oh, what? Take you, us back you, to outer space. No, Are dude, you if, you, if you had a... You, you were going to say something. They had potential for what? Huh? I don't know. I interrupted a thought of yours. I didn't want to interrupt a thought of yours. I thought we were done. You said uh, the DLC ah. in Far Cry 5 had potential. Oh, yeah, no, it had potential because, like, at first I thought it was going to... like, it, And it is that way. It's like three mini ones. So it's like three mm -hmm. mini... It could have been like three mini blood dragons. Like they yeah. could have gave us three little mini, like, just, like, awesome things, and they just, like, gave us three mediocre ones instead, which is honestly just what Far Cry 5 was anyway, which is a mediocre fucking, like, Far Cry experience, which maybe it's just worn out as welcome to me that, now, but, yeah, like, I honestly do is. feel that the story was just a little worse, like... Yeah, uh, it's one of those games, it was like uh, how Bioshock Infinite was going to tackle racism and then just didn't but they still use yeah. the set dressing. It's the exact same thing here where, like, they use a doomsday cult and, like, uh, honestly just, like, the fake news fear and everything type shit that's going on right now. Um, and just, like, people not really understanding the nature of reality, but then not actually dealing with any of those real issues and just, like, oh, maybe you're the bad guy. Okay. <laughs> okay. Like, I don't fuck, know. fuck, cry. I'm not the bad guy. I, I'm not. Like, I really it, just am not at this point. Like... It was like an 8th grader wrote the fucking story. Uh, but yeah. So, Far Cry 5. Eh. But, uh... Eh. How about you take us back to the past now, Matt? Back to a time of, uh... Of Foo. Of Shaq Foo. Okay, so this... This is really retarded. So was, I've been excited for this game for years now, since it hit the Kickstarter. Because I actually really, really like... like not ironically really like Shaq Fu the game um the first one I yeah. own it I bought it just so I could have it again and like really liked it. it I do admit this is like not a great game but I think I just it's in the same way I love the Mortal Kombat movies I think it's just cheesy bullshit 
but it works enough and the game like plays all right so i'm i'm, I'm just down with it has so a great I was, like, all excited for this one. Oh, never mind and then they just fucking like and they were like oh it's gonna be a beat em up now and i was a little less excited i was like ah fuck it a shack beat em up i guess we could do that like i guess that could still be okay and then fucking dude everything about this thing just like is insane to me so like the kickstarter itself there's a lot of times where like so like one of the things was like hey so if you put in this amount of money you can be a voice in the game right yeah and people did that and then that never happened for anybody not a single Ooh. person was ever contacted about being a voice in the game didn't know about uh, that. One of them was that you could you could fucking win a dinner with Shaq. You could hang out with Shaq, right? Somebody mm -hmm. sprung for that one. Never, never hung out with Shaq. Never was invited oh. to hang out with him. One of them was like you get these like cool like cartridges that were like uh, NES or SNES cartridges yeah. in the game. They never made them. Never made them at all. Not even as like a case because um, they do that all the time. No, that's dumb. and then as they were putting in like. Uh, like different like you know because in the kickstarter you like oh if you, we hit like you know three thousand you can get this character this character yeah, stretch goals. there was like six six different characters you're supposed to be able to play as including like a lot of the bosses there's mm -hmm. a full versus mode and co-op mode that we that the kickstarter people unlocked never got added to the game like oh. the company like i looked up the company not a real thing like the whole thing is just like a big ass scam game it seems like even and though the Shaquille game itself just... actually like did some advertising yeah. for it, that's nuts. Yeah. <laughs> and like, yeah, no, like a lot. Of, I think they might be getting sued over a lot of it because like a lot of the things they were saying was were gonna happen just li literally never ended up happening. I hope they do. But uh, yeah, I do too. I hope it gets a bunch of major updates. Like it'd be cool because I would. I'd be down to check it out. The best part of it was the Bar the Barack Obama fucking food they added. Mm -hmm. Which was fun as shit. Just because it was dumbass Barack. The game itself has like a lot of weird, like, just like... You can tell this game's been in development for years, because like a lot of the jokes are like from like years and years ago. Like, mm -hmm. kind of shit that was happening in pop culture. And it's just like, wow, this is not relevant now at all. Like, yeah. almost didn't even get that joke for a second. Like... That kind of shit. You fight a giant ass in one of them. Like, you just fight an ass. So it's worth playing? No, it's not. Like, it really ten. wasn't. But I'm happy I did. At least my curiosity sated. And I just go back to playing, you know, actual Shaq Fu. Shaq Fu Joe, proper. Joe, you know what I'm happy about, Matt? What? Sonic Mania Plus? What? What? So yeah, this is kind go. of a cheat because Sonic Mania came out last year, I do believe, and it was great then, but Sonic Mania Plus adds just enough new stuff for me to be like, fuck it. He plays Mighty Armadillo and Ray the Squirrel. I'm a fucking right. insane nerd, and I've <laughs> always wanted to play Sega Sonic for, it's like a trackball arcade game, where you can play as those two characters alongside Sonic. You can emulate it, I know we're not supposed to talk about that. But I tried it, and I don't have a trackball thing to make that work, so the game's just impossible to play. So I still want to play uh, that I game, but I'm really glad that Mighty and Ray both... Because Mighty's gotten some like references here and there otherwise. I think Ray's only right. showed up back in like the Archie comics a couple... Like, maybe once or twice. Like, that's all he got. Like, it... Like, I don't know. And it's not like Sonic needs more friends, but, like, he's one of the OGs and, like, a hidden OG, so it's pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, it was just Sonic Mania again, though. Really fun time. 2D Sonic game. I know you love it more than I do, and I think it's great. Yeah, dude, fucking Sonic Mania. Yeah, I bought it again just yep. for that shit, and, like, I even chose to pick that game up physically again instead of getting, like... I think uh, Fire Emblem Heroes, it was between those two, and I just like kept staring at Sonic Mania going, I want this, though. That's fair. Uh, yeah. Fire Emblem Warriors is good, but without, like, the... It doesn't have the, like, kick Hyrule does of being a series we love, so... Yeah. Um, no, for sure. After that... Those are games we didn't play... Dragon Quest XI! This is one of your favorite game series of all time, man. I'm pretty new to it. 
Um, what is yeah, it yeah. about Dragon Quest XI that uh, makes it such a standout game? Dragon Quest XI for me, like I, for me it was just the first one that like I actually got into any amount of like time. Um, fucking something about that trailer though when I first saw it at the E3, I just like it like I was just like, dude, I fucking really want to play that. Like the I think it was visually just massively appealing to me. Yeah, it's and I was just like, yep, that's that's fucking something that I would love to play. And as I started playing it, I was like, yep, this is something I really enjoy playing. Because the fucking enemy design in that game is just insanely amazing. Yep. Like, holy shit, it's one of my favorite, like, games for just enemies in an RPG. Like, every enemy I come across, I'm just like, holy shit, that's fucking neat as fuck. Like, like the story itself is pretty just generic, you know, RPG fair, but, like, it doesn't even matter to me. The fucking mechanics all play real nice and, like... I just have a great time when I'm playing it. I did put it down just because I got a few other games at the time and big ass like, RPGs, man. And on a big ass on RPG, a console, yeah. On a console too is the real thing where it's like, yep, because ah, I gotta be at home and I gotta like can't have anything else going on. Well, I mean you can, but right. I don't know. For me, I like to dig into RPGs. I don't, maybe it's because I was right. spoiled in like middle school, just like wasting like a full afternoon on like Final Fantasy something or another but that's just how I like to play RPGs no for sure no but yeah I was uh, just joking around <laughs> earlier Dragon Quest is like my favorite RPG series of all time I just fucking love it so much and I'm so happy that it came out in America and that hopefully it's getting a big push in America again I'm glad Matt's helping support it and he actually is like holy shit Platypunks are amazing yeah they are they are platypunks my favorite fucking thing in the world like, <laughs> like legit would just play a platypunk game like i was like yep this is what we're doing fuck platypunks but yeah i had the same dude, problem a platypus and a punk yeah like, dude a punk what, platypus what want, a platypunk know? right you got it all there um but yeah i had the same problem as you just uh real life got in the way so i haven't beat it either but uh that's that's definitely one I'm gonna go back to, and it's beautiful. And apparently the story like really picks up about the halfway point, so that's good. That that'd be cool to see, cause yeah, for right now that'd be the only thing I'd say about like in that department. I'm just like, all right, like story wise, this isn't like the best, but it's you know it's fine enough for like an RPG. I'm not like shitting on it, but yeah, that uh big ass tree. Apparently once you get there, like that's the halfway point, and it like. I don't know. I've just heard tons of references to just like, holy shit, I did not expect that to happen. So, I I don't know. I'm excited as fuck to get to that point. That's cool. Um, So, pretty much next up, pick your poison, man. Oh, wait. Did you actually play SNK Heroines or should we do that on the wanna play list? Wanna play list? I haven't played it. Okay. Mega Man 11? You didn't do that anyway. <coughs> no, huh? Okay, so do you pick your poison, bro? You want real poison or just slow poison? What the fuck? Gotta pick. Real poison. Fallout seventy six. Didn't play this, but I don't oh, need or want to. Uh, yeah. I don't even really want to get into it. Everybody knows. We'll probably, we'll honestly probably talk about it soon because we want to talk. Last year was really fucked, and I think that's one of the early podcasts we need to do this year is just uh, cover all, like, the fuck-ups going on in gaming right now, but 76 exemplifies yeah. a lot of it. How games as a service fail, how lazy developments fail, how this is clearly a stopgap between Fallout 4 and Elder Scrolls 6, which is obviously their next actual game, and they just threw this out, and they didn't even develop the systems in it at all, and just, if they do a new thing that you like, do that, but don't support this. This is a broken piece of shit that they just are, they're just stealing your money and your time. Don't, don't do it, please, kids, please stop. That's literally insane. Yeah, just don't support this bullcrap, because otherwise you're just going to get more of this shit. Exactly. The sooner just, they learn this is unacceptable to do this continuously like this, they'll fucking start stop. When they start losing money over it, they'll fucking stop. Like that's what's gonna happen. Like, yeah, like I was saying, I want to get into it fully and in like a and it's in its own thing. But like, just the main thing is just don't support this shit, man. You're you're getting beat, and you're just like, yeah, I like it. I still love you, honey. You don't break up with them. Right. They maybe they can change, he, but he you need no good for you. Like, you need time and space right now. Okay, we just need time and space right now. The slow acting poison was Red Dead Redemption Two. 
because it's slow as fuck. Hilarious. Yeah, it's true. That uh, is so, true. I don't know if you want to just take that away, or uh, or I can either way. Uh, yeah, I know I'm playing the motherfucker, so I guess that works. Uh, there you go. Yeah, no, Red Dead Redemption 2 is a weird game. It's super cool. It's very beautiful. Um, but, but it is, like, it is super fucking slow. That The first start of that game, the fucking snow area, is, like, actually, like, one of the worst intros this game could add for that. That is for a bit the there. worst thing just, ever. You just fucking, like, walk through snow for a while, and it's just like, dude, fuck, man. Like, I want to not be here. This whole game... Actually, now that I think about this, the online's the exact same way. You yes. start off doing shit you just do not want to do because the game's making you do it. It's just boring as fuck until you can get to the point where it's like, oh, you can play with friends now. You got 250 bucks, so now you can do it. It's just like, Jesus, game, like, fuck. It just takes a while for it to get to its point. The characters are great, though, like... And the game itself is very beautiful. It's fun just to run around it, and not even do much. Oh, yeah. Like, like I've been just dicking off. I actually moved to the single player. I've just been hunting for the camp because the yeah. fucking. Uh, we were still cracking up a little bit. So I was like, ah, I'll fucking go single player too and see if that helps. It did. But, like, I'm having a grand old time just fucking hunting. Like, not even doing much. Like, added a couple bucks to the fucking camp. Like, that's it. Still had fucking a lot of fun doing it and bullshitting with you here. Yeah, absolutely. Like, man. I think this game's gonna be one of my favorite games of the year next year. But, like, yeah, it was just so slow that it was hard for me to get into it. And then I got another couple games, and because of the slow pace of this, like, I just stopped playing it for a bit. Like, The greatest strength is the greatest weakness of Red Dead Redemption 2 for me, and that's just the fact that they're, like try to be as authentic as possible to just the western feel because honestly like i maybe it's a little cliche but just like life was slower back then and yeah everything is True. fucking methodical yeah. everything like and that's what works so well and also just turns people off of it so much because like yeah why is it so annoying to get on my fucking horse <laughs> well it would be but like i've got time like i got i want to do other stuff so i don't know I really, really like Red Dead Redemption 2. I really love the immersion that it has, and that's something I usually don't say about games, because I'm usually just like, I'm playing a fucking video game, how am I immersed? But Red Dead Redemption 2 right. almost gets me to that point. And, uh, yeah, the characters are all great. I love just walking around, hearing people talk, just whatever. That It's not even, like, important stuff, and I'm just, like, responding to them, waving at them, whatever, going on fishing trips, hunting, like you were saying. All of that's perfect, and then right. when I do do story missions, even though sometimes it like because the game's like you can be a hero or a bad guy but then it's like your next story mission is blow up these innocent people and you're like what okay i guess i'll do that like i guess i'll rob this bank even though i'm trying to be a good guy like i don't like that so much uh th not even for me because it works out for my character because uh, for me i'm like an outlaw with a heart of gold so it's fine doing crime still but uh it just kind of gets in the way of like the open world aspect that they try to present you when they're just like no but actually you are a bad guy right but uh yeah and then red dead online is just <laughs> okay yeah that's fine yep. hopefully they'll fix it with patches or <laughs> not because so i have other online thing. games uh, but yeah, I think that mostly wraps it up for just the multi-console releases. I had to skip over a few because I should have thrown them in the other list of games I want to play. But uh, so yeah, we'll take no, a, I get that. Yeah, yeah. Take a quick break, and then I think we're gonna talk about the PlayStation Four and Xbox exclusives that came out that we either played and liked, or they're just like the big releases of this year for them, in our opinion. Yeah, yeah. No, we'll take a little quick little. Boston water break and just yeah quick little know. Boston water break and we'll be right back all right 